Good morning. <clears throat> um, it's deer season and I filled my tag about five days ago, at least my first tag. I got another one and we'll see how that goes. Pretty cool. Got a freezer full of meat and I am stoked. And a bunch of fun things to play with, like the hide. So today's video is going to be about um, preserving hides. I'm, I mean, use, I'm going to use this as a demonstration to salt a hide and how to salt a hide, but also use it as an opportunity to cover some talking points about hide preservation in general, the pros and cons of different methods and what your options are and when you need to salt and when you don't. Here's your common options for preserving a hide. Uh, salting, freezing, drying. Okay, now each of those has its you know advantages and disadvantages, but I use mostly salting. Freezing is okay. Um, it's really easy. You just pop the thing in a bag, put it in the freezer, and you're done. But you'll find that if you start doing all the kind of stuff I do, with animal parts, you're going to end up with a freezer full of weird stuff. Um, I just threw out a Tupperware container of eyeballs <laughs> and um, all kinds of other weird stuff just accumulates in your freezer because it's so convenient and easy to just stick stuff in there and forget about it. And then two years later, you're digging through and you're like, oh yeah, here's this you know, rabbit hide or whatever that you stuffed in there because you didn't have time to deal with it and you're like oh well, you know you buy yourself time and then you end up with a freezer full of weird stuff and then you call me and i'm like uh yeah i can't really tell you how to tan uh whatever skin you have uh out of your freezer in an email so the other option is drying so drying um is low tech you know all you need to do really is throw the skin out and make sure the edges don't curl in like you can rub some dust or cornmeal into the edges to make sure they don't curl over because you want all the, the wet edges open so that they dry out quickly. And, um, you know, it's better to cut slits in the side and stake it to the ground or lace it in a frame or something because then you end up with something nice and flat that you can roll up and it's easy to handle. If you just hang it on a fence or something, it's going to end up to be this unwieldy, crunchy thing that you can't roll up or whatever. It's just going to be like this all the time and you're trying to move it and stick it places and it's a pain in the butt. So um, yeah, it's better to stake it out. Drying, it takes a lot of work to re-soak a dried hide. I mean, you're adding a lot of extra work and if you stake it out, you're adding even more work and you really should flush it before you dry it unless it's a super clean hide. So that adds yet kind of more work. I mean, you'd be doing that eventually anyway, so whatever, but you, it, it adds work in the, in the front end of the process. So that's the main disadvantage, and um, it depends on what process you're doing too. If you're making buckskin and scraping the grain off, uh, dried hides are just harder to re get fully re-soaked to do that process. They're harder to grain, to remove the grain, and uh, that's the problem. But for bark tanning, that's not so much of a problem, but re-soaking the hide is a problem. Salting. Salting is easy, it's quick, it's pretty cheap. I mean, you do have to buy salt, but it's not very expensive. And for the amount of time it saves, um, it's fairly worth it. It's cheaper than a freezer, than running a freezer all year. And uh, it's pretty simple. You throw the hide on the ground, you smear it with salt, uh, you let some of the liquid drain away, you fold it up, you put it in a, a container, and you, it's just there until you need it. The advantage of salting, it, besides it being pretty quick like that, is that the hides, well, they, the hides keep pretty well, but they stay moist, okay? Now, here's, here's where we start to get into when do you need to salt and when don't you need to salt. You don't really need to salt a hide if you're just going to dry it out anyway. You know, you ju just dry it out because there are some issues with salting. For instance, one of them is that the skin will attract moisture. A lot and just I mean if it's out in an area where there's high humidity it will literally pull water out of the air and just be dripping constantly and then it's gonna lose salt and eventually it become weak it can become weakened it can mold and stuff like that so you know it's different if the thing is just heavily salted and folded all up with salt in it and put into a container with a lid on it that's different than just salting something drying it out and then like having it around the salt's going to get on everything, it's just a pain. So if you're going to dry the hide all the way, don't salt it. The advantage of salting really is that you can keep the hide in a semi-fresh state. It's kind of like, you know, it's great to work with fresh hides. I mean, obviously that's your other option. So if you're working with fresh hides, you know, you just go right into the process. You don't have to do anything. It saves you work and all that. But salting kind of puts the, like freezing, puts the hide into kind of an equilibrium where you want to keep some moisture in your dried, in your salted hide. You want that moisture because that means it's going to soak up fast and it's going to flush easy and it's going to act more like a fresh hide than a dried hide. 
So if you're going to freeze the hide, if you're going to work on the hide right away, if you're going to dry the hide, you don't need salt. Okay, salt is for one, really just one thing. It's to buy you a lot of time uh, while keeping the skin in a semi-fresh, like partially wet state. I see people all the time that have a hide that they salted and then froze or salted and then dried because they don't understand the role, the role of salt and that, that is the role. I mean, it's killing bacteria by sucking them dry. Uh, there's some bacteria that you'll find growing in your salted hides, but I've never had anything that actually affected the hides in any way. So it's kind of putting the hide into this sort of suspension where there's not a lot of bacterial growth and it just sits there waiting for you. Okay, now another cool thing about salting is I don't have to flush the skin at all. I don't have to take any of this stuff off. There's big chunks of fat here. Yeah, I don't have to. You know, that's an advantage to freezing and salting. Okay, this is... Um, I think it's called coarse feed salt. It's not rock salt, but it's not as fine as table salt. Maybe this is probably out of focus, but I don't know if you can get a feel for the size of that. They may be up to like close to a 16th of an inch crystal size. You want to put on a pretty generous layer. I think I can just pull these chunks of fat off. Might as well get rid of those. They come off easy. Now don't do this on your lawn because the salt will kill your grass. I don't want weeds in the driveway so this is perfect. So yeah, you want to cover most of the surface so you're seeing salt. More salt than hide, but you don't have to cover it so much that you don't see any hide. Okay, so once the salt's on, you want to rub it around and especially push it out into all of the edges. You might as well cut off anything you're definitely not going to use, like these little guys. If, well, you know, you can if you want, whatever. Okay, so I'm uncurling all these edges, every one of them. Push that salt right up near the edge. So there it is, and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to leave this for at least 15 minutes. As everybody probably already knows, salt attracts moisture. So the salt is going to just start pulling moisture out of the hide, and it'll literally start dripping eventually. So what I want is I want it to get damp enough, like I already feel it getting damp, that when I kind of fold the skin up, the salt isn't just going to fall directly off you know i mean it's going to start to stick to the hide because it's wet so i'll see you guys in uh you know a little bit when this is a little more damp all right take a look inside this bucket i put in some pieces of firewood that could be bricks it could be like crisscross pieces of lumber anything to keep the hide off the bottom so that when the hide drips it's going to drip out a bunch of liquid the hide's not sitting in the liquid and you can also i mean what we're going to do now is fold this up. I'm going to take it and fold it um, across the down the spine, you know, from the tail to the neck. So this is kind of the salt is kind of slushy now. I mean, some of it's going to fall, but a lot of it's going to stick. See how it's sticking to the skin. So you're just going to match one side of the hide up with the other, just like this. Okay, and then we can fold these back in. Do this nice and neat, you know, make it make it a tidy little package. That looks pretty good. So the point I was gonna make is that I'm gonna I'm gonna let this drip for a while. Like I'm gonna set this in the shade and let it drip basically all day long, maybe longer. And that's going to allow the salt to completely saturate the hide. And what's going to happen is it's going to pull water out of the hide and make a brine. And that's going to kind of soak into the skin. And it's just going to get salt all through the entire skin. But it's also going to drip and lose some of that moisture. And we want that because that way I get rid of some of that liquid that would otherwise drain into the bottom of the tub. So 
I end up with a hide that's, you know, already lost a bunch of moisture and the, you know, the excessive moisture isn't going to be a problem. If you have a lot of room in the bottom of the tub, it's okay to just put it away now. You know, you can always take it out and drain the thing later. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do because that way I can keep this away from the yellow jackets. But either way, um, just get rid of some of that liquid. And then that's it. Seal the container. Um, you can use like a tub of some kind or just a bucket, whatever works for you. And put a seal on that sucker though because you don't want this to dry out. Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna plop this thing in here. Slap the lid on. And that's it. Keep it in the shade, of course. I was realizing when I was editing that I didn't really address how to preserve hides if you want to keep the hair on because it can be a little different. Dried hides are a problem because you get this hide dried out and you have to re-soak it. So during the re-soaking process, which can take a while, you may um, cause the hair to slip because you know, you're dampening it and you're getting it wet and then that, that takes a while so it's wet for a while even though it may not wet, be wet all the way throughout. And so that can be a problem. So freezing is a really good option. You could put that hide in the freezer for a couple of years, up to a couple of years. You can get away with also salting hides for hair on hides, um, but you really need to make sure they're thoroughly salted and well drained. So make sure they drain well, you dump out the liquid and just make sure that they're not super wet, they're not sitting in like liquid salt brine and they get to kind of um, a leathery half half wet, half dry state, and then store them that way and keep them cool. So that can work okay too. You can do any method. You can dry it, you can do it fresh, you can freeze it, or you can salt it. But my number one recommendation would be either to do it fresh or freeze it. It's been a few days since I did my video on uh, salting hides, and I just wanted to tie it up here by showing you some old salted hides and taking a look at the one we salted the other day. So these hides have been in here for probably a very long time. You can see they look pretty good from the outside. Okay, so I'm not sure how old these are, but I'm going to say they're probably years old. So we're going to grab one of these and just take it out to the driveway and unfold it. First we're going to take a look at the hide that we put in the bucket here. And I can feel that it's already you know, somewhat drier than it was. Um, the bottom here is still pretty wet, but it's starting to feel like it's somewhat dry. Now, there's a bunch of liquid in here. I'm just gonna dump it out so you can see it, but I had forgotten there was a small crack or hole in this bucket. So all this liquid is from the hide and more has drained out um, from the bottom. In fact, I can see it dripping right now. So that's quite a bit of moisture. You don't need that. I'll just put that back and this will continue to drain and become more like this hide. Now this one, again, I don't know how old this is, but it's probably been in there for years. It actually doesn't look that well salted. Um, we shouldn't be seeing this black mold here. Yeah, I have no idea where this hides from but yeah it doesn't look like it was salted that well so I want to show you just a couple of things on here um, one is there's tons of meat and fat and it doesn't matter okay the other is we shouldn't be seeing this um, black mold here and I can see that there's no salt on that part um, same over here where there's some more mold so that's not good also, you see this red here? That's like this salt-loving bacteria that can survive in salt, but I've never seen that affect the hide in any way. So I, I'd worry a little bit about this mold. That doesn't look good to me, um, but my guess is that it's okay and that this hide would be fine. Uh, that's how you do that. It's pretty simple, as you can see, and I hope that uh, kind of clears up some misunderstandings, especially about salting, because it's often done, really just done unnecessarily or incorrectly. My hide is in stasis now. Um, it's perfectly safe the way it is for a couple of years, and maybe I won't get to it this year. Thank you for watching, and uh, probably have a few more videos on deer stuff this year, maybe. I'm not really sure. I've got so many ideas and so many videos I've been wanting to do and just keep had to put off. and. 
um, even at two a week, I feel like I'm not keeping up with the amount I want, and it's you know, I'm not sure I can pull off two a week at this point. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you for watching.